Hi, and welcome to this introduction to Spectre from Waves Factory. A powerful and flexible saturation and distortion plugin, suitable for a wide range of mixing and mastering duties. Spectre looks very much like a modern EQ plugin at first glance, with low and high shelving bands, plus three peaking mid bands, except you can only boost and not cut. But under the hood, it works quite differently. If I boost up the low meat of this snare drum, what we're actually doing is blending in a bandpass filtered and saturated signal. So we're adding harmonics, as well as boosting the low fundamental of the snare sound. We can hear just the parallel filtered signals by turning the mix knob all the way up. Now we're only hearing this low mid band that we've boosted. But if I add another band in the upper mid range, we start to hear that region too. Blending these filtered signals with the dry signal allows us to add fatness or brightness with more character than just a simple EQ. The default subtle mode adds fairly gentle saturation to the parallel bands, but we can switch to medium or aggressive modes instead for more obvious, harder distortion. And we can also use the input gain to fine tune the amount, turn it up to drive the distortion harder, or vice versa. And turn on linking to automatically compensate the output gain behind the scenes, which can make it easier to judge how hard to drive it. Notice that toggling linking on or off also automatically adjusts the output gain parameter to avoid any annoying jump in level. This already gives us enough flexibility to dial in saturation suitable for almost any source. Let's crisp up the upper mid-range of these clean strut chords. And then balance that with some extra level and harmonics in the low mid-range as well. Notice that each band has a choice of distortion types. The default solid saturation is symmetrical, adding only odd harmonics. And it works well on most sources. If I switch to the warm type instead, this reduces the higher harmonics I'm adding to the low mid range, but doesn't affect the higher band, which is still set to the solid type. Here's another guitar part, this time a Les Paul, DI'd into a software amp simulator. This means I can run an instance of Spectre before the amp sim, and create a nice dirty mid-range and level boost. A bit like a classic Tube Screamer guitar pedal. But with infinitely more control over the nature of the mid-boost. And the balance between clean and dirty paths. You might think that switching to the Tube distortion style will emulate a Tube Screamer pedal more accurately. The Tube style is asymmetric, which means it adds even numbered harmonics as well as odd giving it a sweeter, purer sound. In fact, most Tube Screamer pedals produce symmetrical distortion, so the solid style is perhaps more accurate. But in this case, I prefer the Tube sound regardless. Note that earlier versions of Spectre named these types the opposite way around, so don't be alarmed if your presets now seem to use the other type. It's only the names that changed. Here's an FM electric piano part, which I'm going to warm up with some low mid-range saturation. Tweaking the gain structure, I find there's quite a fine line between pleasant warmth and too much intermodulation, making the chords sound messy. But let's try narrowing this band and adding two more bands either side. Now I'm splitting the distortion between three much narrower bands, so there's less intermodulation. And I can drive it harder before it starts to sound too gnarly. Spectre can also do more digital styles of distortion. Here's an instance on the drums bus. And I'll start by turning the mix knob all the way up. Notice this gives us silence until I boost up some frequencies to add them to the parallel path. 
Now let's try the bit distortion style. And let's go with aggressive mode, so we can clearly hear the crunchy quantization distortion that results. This type of distortion is just as sensitive to the gain structure as analog types, but in the opposite direction. If I link the output gain, it's easy to hear that turning up the input tames that quantization distortion, while turning it down makes it much more obvious. So you can tune the gain structure to get just the right kind of crunchiness. OK, let's bring in some low bass with the shelf and switch this to the digital distortion type. This provides very hard clipping, which can quickly get nasty if pushed too hard, but can act like a super fast limiter when used carefully. OK, now let's bring in some upper mid-range. And I'll turn off the lower bands for now, so you can hear how dramatically the sound changes with the rectify distortion type. This flips the negative half of the waveform to become positive, changing the waveform shape pretty dramatically, and adding a ton of harmonics. The rectify distortion isn't affected at all by the input level, or even by switching to subtle mode. You can only control the amount you blend in via the band gain or the main mix knob. But there is a half rectify type, which just discards the negative half of the wave instead of flipping it over. And this is a lot less extreme. Let's turn the mix knob all the way down to listen to the dry signal again. And notice how much grit and attitude I can add by blending in the distorted signals. Now let's try a tuned kick slash bass part. This time I'm going to boost up a very narrow region, somewhere around 100 hertz, or perhaps a bit higher. And saturate it to taste. Then I'm going to switch that band to process just the left channel. Now let's have another band, set much the same, but tuned just a tiny bit higher. And set to process just the right channel. If we check this in mono, there are no big phase cancellation problems. We've just got a nice fattening of the bass. But in stereo, the level and phase differences between channels adds a lovely sense of space and depth. Like a super subtle reverb that doesn't soften the part or reduce the impact. The parallel nature of Spectre's processing means you can also run it as a send effect, with the mix knob all the way up. I'll send it this complex pad sound, and also this arpeggiated guitar harmonics part. And I can now boost and saturate the high frequencies for both parts together. With both parts now intermodulating one another in this region, which can help to glue them together. When saturating high frequencies like this, it might be a good idea to enable oversampling at the bottom left. The good quality setting switches in four times oversampling, which eliminates cramping from the filter shapes and dramatically reduces aliasing. Let's also add some detail with a mid band around 1 kHz, which also helps to glue both parts together as a single complex layer. Spectre can also be useful on your mix bus or in a mastering session. The best quality setting provides 16 times oversampling, so aliasing definitely won't be an issue. And with careful tuning of the input gain, and especially the mix knob, the resulting saturation can be as subtle and transparent as you want. The stereo placement options are useful again in this case. I might want to run the low shelving band for just the mid channel, for example. While a low mid range side channel boost can be a surprisingly effective stereo widening technique. If you enable the de emphasis option at the bottom right, 
Spectre will compensate your boosts by subtracting the clean signal again after the distortion stage. In practice, this means that the EQ boosting effect will be reduced or removed altogether, depending on the distortion style and how hard you're driving it. So you can add harmonics to parts of the spectrum without changing the level of existing content so much. Spectre provides a wide range of factory presets organized by category and a choice of interface sizes to suit any display. If you need more information, you can access a detailed user manual via the menu at the top right. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.